Hello and welcome back to the Entertainment Vortex. We were at Brendan Theaters today watching The Girl in the Spider's Web. We went from the very first movie being released a few years ago to jumping into what it to the fifth book in the series. This movie does expect you to kind of know about that first film and kind of the character. It's something where you do need to have a little bit of additional knowledge before you go walking into this movie. It does stand up if you don't necessarily know as much about this franchise, but it does help to know a little bit more about the character before walking into the film because it does kind of start you off right in the thick of things. So this movie is kind of a mixed bag for me. It commits to me what is one of the biggest cinema sins. It shows so many things in the trailer that break the movie for you. First of all, if you haven't seen the trailer and you want to see the movie, I would suggest to avoid the trailer before going to see it. It does one of the biggest cardinal sins, which is it shows the climax shot in the in the trailer. So you lose a lot of that mystique. I mean, this movie definitely has its entertainment value aside from kind of the plot line and the mystery to everything, but all that kind of gets broken because it shows all those things in the trailer. And that's unfortunate. It's something that happens too often in cinema nowadays. Starting off, the biggest positive for me was the cinematography. All of the establishing shots, all of the choices that they made as far as the colors, the locales, everything just shows up so well on screen. It is very beautifully made. They do a lot of really cool camera tricks. They follow the action in really interesting ways. It definitely has some motion to it, so if you are one that is prone to motion sickness, it might be a good idea to avoid this one. If you're into that kind of heavy motion, but not like shaky cam status, this is definitely good for you. Like I said, there's a, a lot of really cool action sequences and they follow it really well with the camera. The acting performances I thought were pretty great. Uh, they definitely didn't have a whole lot of things hampering them which is appreciated especially considering you're moving from one lead to another if you consider the girl with the dragon tattoo that was released uh, several years ago to be in this same grouping the recasting isn't something that's super over the top and I feel like Claire Foy does a, a great job of portraying the character a lot of layers and a lot of emotions and I felt like they were really well uh, portrayed on screen I also like to mention Lakeith Stanton is becoming a legitimate a-lister he's been in seven several great films over the last few years from being someone who's relatively unknown and he does a great job in this movie as well. I really appreciated his character. It also had some layers and some interesting uh, dynamics with some of the other characters on screen uh, and I want to see him in more things. Now we'll start to kind of dig into some of the negatives that we had for this movie. Nick mentioned it after we finished watching the movie that he had some issues with the pacing. I didn't have nearly as many issues with the pacing because I do like a slower burn movie, but he said that it was more the choppiness of that pacing, that there are a lot of a lot of scenes that were really slow and then it would go to an action sequence and then it would go back to being slow. And it's that back and forth that sometimes is jarring for a lot of viewers. I tend to not be as affected by that, but I know that a lot of people are. For me, the biggest thing was was the issues with the trailer, and even without the trailer, a lot of the twists and turns were very tropey and very easy to pick up on before you even sit down in the theater. You know, there are twists that are completely telegraphed that you see coming a mile away. Some of those are, like, like I said, led by the trailer and how much they show. Like, there are some things that you could definitely do without knowing before you go in that the trailer completely ruins for you. That's disappointing, especially considering the girl with the dragon head is considered to be a great cinema and I just feel like it's something that's holding this movie back there was a lot of mystery around that trailer for the girl with the dragon tattoo and there was no mystery with this one they give you tiny little version of the entire plot of that film even with just the first trailer that's released. So overall, I'd say that I would give this movie a six out of 10. It's not a terrible movie. I'm definitely glad I saw it. Like I said, technically speaking, this movie is great and the acting performances are really great as well. But this movie really needs to be something that you see almost kind of blind, just because without having those issues with the trailer, you don't run into the issues where you constantly know what's happening next in the plot. This movie is something that you need to have that mystery and that element of espionage and that sort of thing going on and it just doesn't come across the right way because you know what's going to happen next. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We give you multiple videos every single week and we have t-shirts available if you're interested in those as well. Those are available down in the description below. We hope you'll follow us into the Vortex. We'll see you next time.